Hello, I'm Chonglin Chon from Hamam Church in Chuncheon. I had so many complicated questions in my life when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, but since I met the Lord of Resurrection, all of my problems, even cancer, were solved at once. Because I majored in piano at the university, I used to only do work related to piano. However, when I was in my 30s, people were asking me to do work other than piano, and I sincerely helped them. My 30s were so busy with lots of piano performances, lessons, and other business. I always thought it was really important to keep faith with people in any relationship. So I'd given my best to help other people, even if I would suffer loss, but people so easily betrayed me. For me, it didn't make any sense the way people lived, and life to me was a question mark. Why do people cling on to you when they need something, and then so easily betray you after you help them? Why do I struggle so much in life? Why do my parents always push me to get married, ignoring my vision for my life in this world? Would it be better for me to study abroad for a higher degree? These questions had made me so confused, leading me to feel more and more anxious. One of my friends used to call me whenever I had a mentally hard time. I met her in my 20s when she told me the gospel. At that time, I harshly insulted her because of the gospel, but she kept calling me. The funny thing is, she may or may not have known it, but I got a call from her each time I've been betrayed by others. At first, I thought it was just a coincidence, but as it repeated, I realized that God was knocking at the door of my heart through this friend. Actually, I didn't like Christians at that time, but she was quite different from other Christians I'd known. She was not hypocritical or selfish at all, but rather so sincere and honest. So, I was always happy to get her call, and she often comforted me. The most precious thing to me is friendship. I have a special group of friends that I've had since I was a child. Last October, I've been to Gwangju to meet one of those friends who was coming back from the States. I hadn't seen her for several years. My friend, her mother, and I had a great time together for the first time in several years. After we met, I came back to Seoul. A few days later, her mother called me to go on another trip together. Frankly, it was a bit hard for me to go to Gwangju again within two weeks, but I didn't want to refuse her. Once I arrived there, I found out that she had made a doctor's appointment for me. She'd noticed that I didn't look good, so she wanted me to see a doctor. So I was obliged to go follow her and see a doctor. After the ultrasound scan, the doctor diagnosed me with breast cancer. It was like a blackout when I was told the word cancer. My friend was crying loudly, but it sounded muted to me. The doctor had said it was too late to take any measures. I left the thought of those words behind me and drove to Seoul back in the pouring rain. I cried again and again as I drove. And just then, the word God came into my mind. I didn't have faith, but I used to rely on God each time I was in trouble. I thought of the uncanny timing of my friend's call, which I considered to be God's knock at the door of my heart. So at the time, I thought it might be God's message for me to come to him. God was so close to me like a good friend, but I thought I had nothing to do with him. Coming back to Seoul, I couldn't tell my parents what happened to me. I could only tell my friends, and especially my friend who told me the gospel. Unexpectedly, she made me a doctor's appointment at a university hospital where a member of her church worked as a doctor. With kind care, all the process was completed smoothly, and they let me know the results so quickly. According to the result, an 8-centimeter tumor was found in my right breast and had already spread to my lymph node. On top of that, the cancer spread into my bones around my waist, chest, spine, and pelvis, and the result showed that the cancer may spread to even to my lungs. Fortunately, I was able to receive the most qualified medical treatment from one of the most famous doctors in the area of breast cancer. I was in stage 4 of breast cancer and the tumor size was not small. Moreover, it had spread to here and there. In this stage, the cancer was no longer operable. The anti-cancer therapy was now stopping the cancer from spreading, but the doctor said that the cancer that had spread to my bone wouldn't go away. I was supposed to have 12 injections over 6 therapy sessions, but I had a terrible side effects from just the first injection. On exactly the 21st day after the first injection, all of my hair fell out at once. Besides the normal complications from the cancer treatment, I went into shock because of the injection and had to be admitted to the hospital for infections, so I was in agony. My heart was broken when I thought of my mother having a hard time caring for me. My blood vessels were all injured due to the strong injection, and I was exhausted already just by the second therapy session. I cried out to God in tears in the bathroom. God, if you really exist, please take me right now. Don't make me miserable anymore. This was my prayer. However, two weeks after each therapy session, I would completely recover as if I've never had suffered those side effects. 
But that kind of good condition only lasted for about a week. And every time that happened, the friend who told me the gospel would come to Seoul from Chuncheon to meet me. Because I'd been stuck at home, I was really thankful to be able to get some fresh air and be freed from the stress and loneliness that came from keeping my illness to myself because I didn't want my family to worry. Before the third therapy session, I was so afraid. Because I knew God would listen to her prayer, I asked her to pray for me to have less pain during the therapy. One day after we met, she called me to let me hear the sound of prayer during the Sunday service. The pastor and church members prayed, calling out God's name for me. I was shocked. I didn't want anyone to know that I had cancer, so I'd never even told my relatives, only some close friends. But how could she let more than 1,500 members of her church know that I had cancer? I regretted telling her of my condition and asking her to pray. But she hadn't noticed how I felt and just kept telling me about the amazing power of the intercessory prayer in an excited tone. From that day on, the pastor and church members continuously prayed for me every day. Surprisingly, I wasn't suffering the terrible pains and symptoms any longer after the third anti-cancer therapy session. Because I was in good condition, even during the session, that friend came to meet me more often. The church members came with her to meet me together. After the fourth therapy session, I was invited to visit a church member's home. Because I had no more pain from the anti-cancer therapy, we talked about this change and had fellowship about God's word all night. The next day, I went to church with them in Chuncheon. I didn't like the church at first. <laughs> the praise and praying time seemed to go on forever. And even worse, the pastor was so passionate, but I couldn't understand his sermon at all. And I hated the very sight of the church members. <laughs> so I got out of there and came back to Seoul alone. However, the next morning, I felt something push me to go to that church once again. So I went to Chuncheon by express bus without telling my parents. On the bus, I took out a book from my bag to pass the time. It was a book a church member gave to me, asking me to read it. I started out just going through the book without any thought, but then suddenly chapter 3 caught my eye. Sin, which originated from the Archangel of Heaven. He did not want to have God in his heart and committed the sin of trying to be his own master, so he became Satan. After he was expelled from heaven, he made Adam, who was created to be a child of God, commit the same sin. All the people committed the sin of not wanting God in their hearts and being their own masters, just like Satan. The part that talked about that completely woke me up. I realized that I was a sinner. Reading this text, I realized it was because I was my own master in my life, not believing in Jesus, that I've always suffered and my life was going the wrong way. So then I repented of that sin right at that moment. And I thought of the verse that my friend kept giving me. It touched my heart deeply. Isaiah 43, 1. Fear not, you are mine. It was the most beautiful redemption in the world. My heart was filled with peace and joy that I've never known before. And when I finally entered the church, my heart was overflowed with an indescribable feeling. I had hated the very sight of them last night, but now I saw each of them so lovely and glowing. <laughs> During the praise, tears fell down endlessly. When the pastor preached that we ought to live according to the Bible, I said amen with all of my heart. Amen. Seeing the pastor and church members praying to God for me with their whole heart, I got to know that they are my real heavenly family. At that moment, I realized that I didn't know the simple fact that I should repent of the sin of not believing in Jesus and accept him as my Lord, that I'd hated being told the gospel, and that my soul was sicker than my body. If I hadn't had cancer, I may have never known God. I was so grateful for the love of God who raised me up when I was standing in front of death. Since then, there has been a lot of change in me. In the past, the word cancer used to make me feel frustrated and cry, but now it had become a present from God, and death turned into hope. Amen. Even while receiving therapy, I went to Chuncheon every day for church service. And on other days, I helped out my friend who told me the gospel by giving piano lessons to children at her piano academy in Chuncheon. I was truly happy and joyful, falling in love with Jesus and reading the Bible every day. Be joyful, always. Give thanks in all circumstances. Take every worry to the Lord. Love your neighbors. When I only focused on Jesus, these words were fulfilled in my life naturally. One month had passed since I started this life of faith. Then I went to see the doctor who let me know the results after the past three therapy sessions. The doctor said he was sorry to say that the size of my tumor wasn't getting smaller, even with the very strong medicine. From that day on, I started preparing for death. 
First, I figured out what to do with my clothes, and I cleared out all my online accounts, trying to wrap up my life. And then when I took out the photo albums to get rid of them, I saw myself so young and fresh in the old photos. But now I was losing my hair, my face was dark and swollen, so I couldn't bear to tear up the old photos. So I just put off dealing with the photos for the time being. Honestly, death didn't scare me at all because I had assurance that I would live eternally. Death rather made me excited because I could meet Jesus Christ in heaven. I was so excited and joyful, like a child on the night before vacation. Only one thing troubled my mind. It was seeing my loving family and friends who would be depressed when I die because they don't know Jesus. However, I was convinced that by seeing how I died, they would be able to be sure about heaven. From then on, I started praying for souls to be saved. Strangely, I found myself praying for some long-lost friends. What's surprising was that they started to contact me after I prayed. I knew that not much time was left for me, so whoever I met, I shared the gospel with them joyfully. I decided to devote myself only to testifying to the gospel until I went to heaven. Around 20 days after I started preparing for death, I went to see the doctor to check the final result after the past six therapy sessions. I was ready to hear the worst results. However, the doctor told me that the cancer that had spread into my bones and lungs were completely gone. Now, the cancer in my breast could be removed with surgery. How could this be, since the doctor had told me even the anti-cancer therapy wouldn't remove the cancer in bones? At that moment, I started to panic after hearing that I would have to lose a breast. I had prepared for death so joyfully, so how could I now be a fearful about losing just my breast? I had to pray right away. Asking the doctor to postpone the surgery date, I went to church for worship. Thankfully, after praying, none of that fear was left in me. A week later, the surgery was successfully completed with the power of the prayer. The doctor told me that the tumor was bigger than expected, but all of it is completely removed and not requiring additional radiation or anti-cancer therapy. Amen. Amazingly, six months passed after the therapy began, and there was no more cancer left in my body. Amen. I have a big surgical scar on my breast. This scar is the most precious and glorious badge because it let me meet the Christ of the resurrection. Man is destined to die once. But death isn't the end. Rather, it's a new start. I was immensely shocked when I found out that I had cancer. In my life, the biggest event is not that I had cancer and almost died, but the amazing grace of meeting Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ saved my soul, which was even sicker than my cancer-ridden body. Amen. When I stood in front of death, I realized that there was nothing I could take with me. Even my body that you now see, I must leave here in the end. So all my worldly greed is gone, and now I only see Jesus Christ in heaven. All the question marks in my life, they are now all answered with one final exclamation mark. In the past, I needed God only when I had emergencies. But now I believe God created us and he really wants to lead every soul to be saved from this dark world to the eternal heaven. Amen. I came to realize that the answer to life is to focus on the reason why Jesus came to this earth, died for us, and rose from the dead. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all of these things will be given to you as well. In the past, just the word evangelism made me awfully annoyed. However, now I evangelize to everyone around me anytime I have the chance. I usually tell those who don't know Jesus, especially to the sick, to focus on Jesus who rose from the dead and is always with us, not on their diseases. It is always engraved upon my heart that my mission is to spread the gospel to sick people. Before meeting Jesus Christ, I was my own master, chasing after worldly greed. Now that I have hope in heaven, I always focus on Jesus being my Lord. Nowadays, God let me meet more and more precious souls and know the joy of spreading the gospel. Whenever I tell the gospel, it feels like I'm getting a big present. No answer could be found when I didn't have Jesus in my life. I truly pray for you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and be free from all the unsolved problems in the world. Amen. Thank you.